Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Good morning. Welcome back from the weekend. I hope yours was so good. Mine was really full. Like, I just told the God. Um, yeah, I hung out with my kids. I went to a family reunion. I went swimming at my Aunt Jan's house. I... Um, What else? Went to a graduation party. I worked a little bit and cleaned some offices and yeah, just hung out, watched my husband get back on his cot. I watched him leave the bed again, like rerun. (laughs) And this morning I slept in because last night very late, my dog got sprayed in the face with a skunk. Not that I had to clean it up. Thank you, dear son, for doing all of that. You did a good job but it still disrupted my sleep, boo-hoo. So then I couldn't sleep, stayed up half the night listening to music and enjoying myself, but now today I'm like, you know, a little late on the start. Also today, I'm double timing. I'm double timing you. And um, I'm also working, creating a vlog today. So I had to like do some recording this morning of me going out to the chicken coop and just a little recording now to kind of you know, give a little behind the scenes, just a tad um, here and there. So I don't know. I'm a, I'm a definitely a shitty vlogger, <laughs> but sometimes people tune in on my YouTube channel, Sadie Marie Cherico, and um, it's okay. So, anyways, we're doing another Law of the Universe today, and then we're gonna pull some herbs from the Herbal Healing deck. Um, I don't know. I'm just excited to connect with this deck today. I am still connecting um, with Lemon Balm. There's just no rush with Lemon Balm. And I think that's what I'm going to have to understand about her. You know, I've been like thinking to myself, I need to get this Lemon Balm podcast done. And, you know, I'm thinking about it. I'm being with the herb. I'm putting her in my water, drinking her, taking the tincture. And the only thing she's doing to me is mellowing me out and not making me work faster. <laughs> but I guess, you know, I that's fine because we all have healing work to do. And I have had some stress and anxiety a little bit, you know, touches of it here and there with my life and kind of thinking like, how is how am I going to be taken care of? And how am I going to have any money for anything? And you know what I mean? It's like lemon balm's just like, you don't really need to think about that right now. <laughs> That's what lemon balm says to me. So granted, I am loving it up. And having it, um, a sprig of it infused in my little, uh, like a pint mason jar, just a tiny bit. Um, the water that I'm sipping on this morning is so lovely. So if you have some lemon balm, start to get to know it first by putting some in your water, letting it sit at least overnight and uh, enjoy it that way. Uh, I love the tincture, but um, you know, some people don't really need any extra alcohol in their body, but it is powerful medicine. It's antiviral and she's calming and so much more. So um, yeah, I'm still going to definitely work on the lemon balm. I have several pages of podcast notes started, so it's not like I haven't done nothing, but uh, yeah. So let's just recap Friday and the Law of Expectation because it was so good, you guys. Uh, We could have stopped at number 26 and um, I would have felt like we have done enough. We know this is what we need to know. So I really highly revered law number 26 the law of expectation so then i think i just on my notes in my little notebook that i'm i'm jotting down notes um i guess for myself to refer back to 
Um, at the end of all of this, I'll have a little notebook that has all the law. <laughs> Hopefully I can squeeze them all in. But I think I wrote down the entire law because it was only three sentences and it said it so well. So law of expectation. Energy follows thought. Energy follows thought. Yeah, so it was like, dang, what are you thinking, you know? We move toward, but not beyond, what we can imagine. And then it was like, yo, what are you imagining? Are you even, like, utilizing your power of imagination? Like, don't believe society that says, like, you should um, not daydream and not visualize. And they don't value that stuff. And the thing is, it helps us create our reality. So the next part of it was what we assume, expect, or believe colors and creates our experience. So it's really um, so important for us to be aware of what we assume, what we expect, and what we believe because it affects everything. And the last part was by changing our expectations, we change or we change our experience of every aspect of life. So if you want to change your life, change your expectations. Change your expectations will, will alter your manifestations. And remember, 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 remember that energy follows thought. So yeah, what you thinking about? So get happy, get in joy, get in love, get in light, get into your I am presence, I am light, I am love, I am. And, you know, my intentions this week with the Lion's Gate portal is to call in some Syrian energy, um, you know, to align, assimilate, and anchor in, anchor me into my next highest frequency that's in my highest good. So I am looking to level up. So if you're looking to level up your energy, your life, make intentions to do so. Call in some energy. You have access to Syrian energy, everybody does. And um, call it into your life. I call in the Syrian energy now. Whew, yeah, to assimilate, to anchor, to all of that, come on, you guys, bring yourself into a better feeling place. If you don't want to do that, just make intentions like, I'm am making intentions today to not think crap. <laughs> I'm making intentions to think better, to have good feeling thoughts, to use my imagination for good, to envision joy, love, peace, harmony in my mother trucking life. Okay, any way you want to go about your intentions, you go ahead, you do it your way, but um, start being super aware that energy follows thought. So yeah, listen to episode 50 if you want me to repeat all of that again and again. <laughs> I loved it so much, the law of expectation. Today we're doing number 27, the law of faith. So I didn't read that yet, but it sounds like like a beautiful way to start out our Monday, start out our week, and um, get, we're already headed in the right direction, so stay that way, you know, it's like keep putting one foot in front of the other on your path of light, walk your talk, okay, walk your talk, you don't just talk about love, feel the love, feel it, feel it as much as you can, bring it into your body, Bring it into your breath. So on that note, I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. <clears throat> even though my life continues, certain aspects of my life, not even my life. I'm not crediting one person to bring in down my life. But um, yeah, like here we go again um, with the marital whatever the fuck. And um, I just can't even let it shove me or shake me or rattle me out of love so I send love to my husband I send love to him on the cot and I send love to him in his life and I wish him well I wish him well 
So anyways, yeah, if you're just tuning in, you'll have to go back and listen to all the episodes where I complain about that. But I have just decided right now, no, yesterday, last night, I was having an epiphany when I couldn't sleep that I just can't keep perpetuating the drama anymore. So um, we, I got to focus on on my, my spiritual education. I got to... Sp- focus on my herbs. I got to focus on my happiness. I got to focus on feeling good. And then if he wants to be a part of that with me, he is welcome to join in. Everyone is. Everyone's welcome to join me. Everyone's welcome to be part of um, laughter and love and connection. Like I'm ready to connect with people. So that includes everyone. All right. So are we ready? Let's see if we we are, I'm kind of have a few assumptions what the law of faith might be, but let's read what this says. The law of faith is founded upon the recognition that we know more than we have read, heard, or studied. We know more because we are a part of the all. We have a direct link to universal wisdom. We only have to look within, listen, discern, then trust. We need to develop <clears throat> we need to develop more trust in our own deepest intuition and wisdom as the final arbiter and source of our decisions. Okay, so this is pretty cool. The law of faith is basically like saying we know more than we have read or studied or heard. Like we know more because we're a part of the all. We're a part of infinite intelligence, universal wisdom or whatever. And we have a direct link to it. We only have to look within, listen, discern, then trust. So the law of faith says that we need to develop more trust in our own deepest intuition and wisdom as the final arbiter and source of our decisions. So yeah, I mean, it's like listen to your own guidance, listen um, to your intuition, listen to you. And yeah, I totally get that because, you know, we have people that we tune into, like, you know, I love to listen to channelers and I love to listen to a few inspirational people but at the end of the day, it's me and my discernment, my intuition, my knowledge that I need to use as the basis for my decisions. So even if you're tuning into this podcast and you like that I pull oracle cards, yeah, take away messages from that, but don't ever, you know, use anyone's information above your own because you have a direct link to universal wisdom we all do because we are all a part of the all and that's why we know more than like you know you ever say something like say something really wise and intuitive from your heart space and you're like oh my god how do I even know that well you have a direct link to universal wisdom and you know a lot more than you've read or you're heard or you're studied I mean, you've got a wisdom inside of you that you can't go to school for. You just have that within you all the time. So the law of faith, I like it. I like it. So yeah, I mean, you always want to, you know, even if I pull a message here, think about it for yourself. Use your own discernment and uh, yeah, just have a little faith, y'all. Law of faith is founded upon the recognition that we know more than we have read, heard, or studied. And we know more because we are part of the all. We have a direct link to universal wisdom. We just have to look within, listen, discern, then trust. So yeah, that's why meditation, contemplation, intuition, those are all really, really important things. And then, oh, yep. Put your arms out, (laughs) give it to the universe, and trust. Trust that your gut feeling is valid, right? That your knowing 
is valid. So yeah, you make your own decisions. All right, so got the herbal healing deck out of the box while I was rolling through the law of faith a few times. Sometimes I have to repeat it in a couple different ways so it really can sink in and become meaningful to me because that's the whole point of going over these laws of the universe is to be, have them be personally beneficial and meaningful so that we can apply them to our life. So the first herb we have coming in on this Monday morning is Devil's Club, a message for us to regain our power. So regain our power. And on the bottom, I'm gonna just look, it's rose with an open heart. So a lot of times in our world, we think our power is acting out defending, attacking, standing up for what we believe in, and being kind of almost aggressive. That's how our ego lower mind associates power in our reality, but that is actually not the truth. Our true power is from our heart space. It, it is our direct link to universal wisdom. It is our connection to the divine. Everything else is just an illusion. Everything outside of oneness is just an illusion. So if you feel like you don't have power, it's just because you know you have these limited belief systems that are making you think that. But we all are powerful beings. We're all creator beings. And if you want more power in your life, if you wanna really reclaim your power, wanna really step that up, open up your heart. Open up your heart. Listen more, go within more discern more, trust more, have more faith. Um, it sounds like wishy-washy things when you're standing next to the war machine, but if you really want more true inherent power, you go within for that. You activate your heart space, you open it up, you bring more love into your body and into your mind and into your life. So yeah, another thing from Devil's Club is we do give our power away a lot. Like, oh, can't do anything. Government's gonna do what government's gonna do. Or, you know, I have to do this. Like, we're constantly giving away our power um, and doing things that are not in alignment with who we truly are. And this Devil's Club just wants me to say to you <laughs> that it's okay to say no. It's okay to say no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going there and no, I'm not hanging out with, you know, in that situation. It's okay to say no, especially society keeps wanting to put you all the time in situations that take away your power. Um, even just like holidays, I'm going there. Even just like holidays, um, making you think that you have to participate in these conditioning programs, it just constantly keeps you in like this low state of that you have to do as you're told and you have to do this and oh well now, now it's October, we have to decorate for Halloween. Well, what if you don't want to? Don't. Okay, now, now it's Thanksgiving, I have to cook a turkey that I don't even really want to, to have in my oven. Then don't. All right, well, now it's Christmas. Now I have to go into debt buying everybody that I know a gift and overspending and overindulging and overeating. Hey, by now, you should understand what I'm trying to tell you. Don't. If you don't like it, don't do it. Quit wasting your time. Quit wasting your money. Quit wasting your health on um, holidays and any event that is not in alignment with you. So reclaim your power. Um, say no if you want to, if, if you know, have the power to say no and reclaim your power by going within. Yeah, going within and nurturing that inner space um, and, uh, and uh, that intuition. So Rose is so beautiful. It has like, it's like this rose person standing kind of um, with two rosebuds out to the arm. Like it looks like arms up, arms open with this flower, if that makes sense. 
and it has this sacred geometry spiral thing going on in the center of it that kind of reminds you of the flower of life but it's something different but the rose is all about the open heart so as devil's club um that that's a root you know so it's like a message to anchor into your power anchor into your energy anchor into your knowingness um, of course there's a message with boundaries as i look at devil's club with those sh sharp spikes <clears throat> mm, those sharp spikes um, definitely maintain your boundaries and and um you know that's healthy to do maintain your boundaries but Rose is also saying, yeah, maintain your bound. Okay, she recognizes that Devil's Club has those spikies, but her arms are way open. Like, yeah, you can say no and still keep your heart open. You can say to someone, it's time for this to end, but I wish you well. I wish you the best. You can still send love to that person. So if you don't like somebody because they're rude gossiping a bully like whatever you know just negative you don't have to be with them you know um but it's also so beneficial to the both of you to not judge them to not send hate or shade or nothing like that and and keep your heart open to them though like like i send you love i wish you the best you know send them like a heart hug you just an energetic heart hug and uh, send good energy out there so all right we got devil's club we got rose what an interesting combo nation so let's get another herb here let's get maybe another top and bottom would be okay we're making intentions this week to anchor in more energy um we're making intentions to level up and we are going to pull this card and then the bottom card okay all right so I just want to lay these out and then I also want to put the deck away I know like time restraints here <laughs> like if I put the deck away then I won't be tempted to pull any more cards um, and then that I'll keep this podcast in a reasonable, a reasonable time frame. Okay. Are we ready? Am I ready? I need to take a breather. I'm a little nervous. Let's see what we got here. Why am I nervous? Oh, cause it's Hawthorne. Hawthorne is all about heart healing. So yeah, as we open our hearts, um, right away, you'll probably know which like, okay, like my heart's. 75% open like right away you're gonna know like if you're gonna feel if there's any resistance if there's any trouble like it sounds easy yeah open up your heart right be loving send love but if there is a part that is like stuck it seems like you can't open it like you just can't send somebody love in particular you've got some healing work to do so that's so beautiful that we got Hawthorne right after Rose with heart healing. So Rose is saying have an open heart. Hawthorne's keeping it real. And, you know, she's got, she's got um, spikes on her too. So she's also, she also respects boundaries. Um, but she's saying like, okay, like I'm just coming in because Rose makes it sound like you should have no trouble, but I know that you probably will because you've been hurt, you've been offended, and now it's time to go inside there and really feel it out. Maybe you really need to feel the sadness once and for all and completely um, so that you can honor the fact that you were hurt and you can start the process of your healing work. If you're in denial, like that you're not hurt, it's gonna be hard to heal something that you are in denial about. If you're pretending like it does, it's not there, you can't heal it. But hello, it's, it's there. So you might as well um, admit to it to yourself, 
feel it completely, even if it sucks, and then start to allow the love within you to heal yourself, heal your heart healing. Um, so yeah, that's a beautiful message. We can maybe dive into that a little bit. Maybe I'll look in the book and see if there's another message, but let's see what the fourth card is. So we have Devil's Club, Reclaim Power, Rose, Open Heart, Hawthorne, Heart Healing, and our fourth card for this Monday, this beautiful Monday, is Cedar. It's a tree. And, well, Hawthorne's a tree too, obviously. But, um... <laughs> This is like a this this is this tree is intense. It's cedar. It's all about ritual. Um so hmm like I know that every morning usually like as a, as like a energetic ritual I light some incense. You know, today of course I was motivated to do it cuz the house smelled like skunk. <laughs> but um yeah, like cedar coming in with more ritual with a message of ritual so to me when I think about doing your heart healing work you know and reclaiming your power and opening your heart I really think I see you sitting in meditation I see you quieting down going within Allowing yourself to step into or sink into that reflective state. So even if you can only do this for a few minutes every morning, every lunch break, every afternoon, several times throughout the day, get yourself into the ritual of going within you, quieting down, anchoring your energy down. If you just have a minute to breathe deep, See your energetic roots coming from your root chakra or coming down from the bottom of your feet. See them going down into the earth and anchoring in. Take a deep breath and visualize that air, that life force going into your heart and opening the doors like it's like shutters <laughs> On, the, on a window, old-fashioned shutters, opening them up more and more and more and more, you know, until the shutters are fully opened and even fall away, maybe. Like, we don't even need these anymore. Just open up your heart space and allow the breath, the light, and the feeling of love to just swirl in your chest cavity, swirl around your heart, and swirl around your heart aches, and do your heart healing. So there's a lot of different ways that you can in include ritual in your life. It's such a vast, like, word. Um, you can have the daily ritual of journaling. You can have the daily ritual of prayer of saying affirmations, of setting intentions. Um, you can just have a morning ritual of sitting on the porch each morning and putting your face to the rising sun. It's so simple. So there's a lot of rituals that we can do for our mind, we can do for our body, we can do for our heart. We can energetically um, just take the idea of ritual in whatever landscape works for us, whatever realm, whatever direction, whatever perspective. But it is ingrained in us. Like it is something that our ancestors did. And so once you start creating daily ritual for yourself, it's really probably going to resonate because it's sort of how we're designed. So it doesn't have to be strict. It doesn't have to be disciplined or hard fast. It could, you know, vary day to day. But I think the whole point of ritual is that you're taking time for you. You're saying, I am valid. I am worthy. I matter. My self-worth, my self-esteem, my self-love is important. And that is one of the best ways to reclaim your power on a daily basis understanding that you're important and that you're worth it and that you're sovereign 
and that you are a creative being and you are in charge of your life. You are in charge of your energy and your thoughts and where you want to direct them and how you want to feel and what you want to focus on. And you get to say whether your heart is opened or closed. And it's up to you. You have the free will to decide if you want to do your heart healing or not. It's completely up to you. Like if you just want to always be wounded, always have a chip on your shoulder, always be resentful, always be hurt, always be angry, always be closed down, then you're allowed. You're unconditionally supported and you can do that if you want. <laughs> but who the hell is going to want to do that for too long because you just get miserable. You get miserable, you get lonely, you get bitter, and you get out of touch with your inner wisdom okay and we all have a direct link to universal wisdom like the law of faith said but you can help it you can you can um, strengthen it by these daily practices by the ritual of just being aware of it you know what i mean that's why some people have so much more intuition and guidance than others because they have built upon it. They have taken it up in their own hands to nurture it, to grow it, to, yeah, make it more powerful. So I love how these are kind of, they, we can keep walking in this circle again and again. Like, let's have that daily ritual of strengthen, strengthening <laughs> our direct link to universal wisdom. Let's reclaim our power by listening to our intuition. You know, it's like we can keep going around and then once our intuition um, really gets kind of going, we have more faith in ourselves, in life, in the divine, in connection. And then we feel safe to open our heart in love. We feel safe to let energy of the highest good flow in and out of us because we, we participated in the daily ritual of saying, today I open myself to spirit of the highest good for myself and the all, you know? And then it's like you create this beautiful space for your heart to heal. You call in, you call in your guides and say, please help me heal my heart. Please help me heal my heart. I am ready to open it more and to love more and to, you know, reclaim my powerful essence, which is love. So yeah, thank you, Cedar. Thank you, Devil's Club. Thank you, Rose. And thank you, Hawthorne. That is so wonderful. So I'm actually not going to open up the book because I feel like I did a pretty okay job. <laughs> but um, what I want to do now is actually, let's grab, let's grab another deck. Hold on, I'm gonna push pause for you. Okay, that is such a beautiful message. And I want to end this podcast with getting us a little, um, a guide for the day, a hedge witch, a medieval hedge witch from the Enchanted Spell Oracle. Um, I just want to see um, which one comes through just because we are, we're anchored in, we're in our heart space, we're feeling it. Let's see um, who wants to come in as a guide for the day and just keep us forward in forward motion, right? We're going to level up we want to open up, we want to level up, we want to reclaim up, <laughs> we want to heal up, <laughs> we want to do a lot of that. So let's get a hedge witch. Can I please have one card, one hedge witch? There she is. And um, she's picking up with in the middle. And our hedge witch, ooh, is luxury. So we have luxury coming through. 
and she is a beautiful hedge witch. She has a white swan next to her and she has grape vines um, growing around her. So we have, once we get into this energy of reclaiming power, opening our heart space, doing the healing work, creating a beautiful life for ourselves inward every day with ritual, right? Because it's our inner experience that's really what we've got all the time with us wherever we go. We start to create this energetic field around us that brings good and more good energy towards us, more good experiences, more abundance, more love, more light, more luxury. And then we can really just I'm going to put her right here on the edge. She's leading us. She's leading these cards off the off the table, off the desk. But she's leading us into a better feeling place. You know, it's like enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Start to look for the good. Be appreciative. Be grateful. And be grateful for yourself for doing this inner work, for being loving. Be so proud of yourself, especially if, you know, you haven't always been able to feel like this. Every time that you feel a little bit better and a little bit better and you recognize that you are doing well, really kind of relish in that for a moment and be like, yeah, I really am. I really am happy right now. I really am genuinely loving right now. And uh, just start to see that as, you know, true luxury. Okay, so luxury card, it does have a message of opulence, grandeur, and joy. And that is the vine. And the vine was brought to Britain by the Bronze Age Celts. And as such, it is not a native tree to the isle. Nonetheless, it became an important part of folklore. And its spiral growth pattern can be seen emulated in Celtic knot work. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's really pretty. This card, you'll be able to see a picture of it on my Insta at Herb Oracle. Um, medicinally, it was used in medieval times as a poultice for coughs and inflammations and uh, Culpepper, my boy Culpepper, describes wine made from the vine tree as the greatest cordial among the vegetables. Wine is thought to open the crown chakra. Interesting. Now I'm going to have to drink some wine. <laughs> wine also opens a lot of other things for me too, like usually my mouth and usually sometimes a headache, but I guess maybe that's when you have drank too much. So maybe just a little bit of this this wine. So yeah, this um, priestess of luxury is positioned between, beneath the leaves and grapes of the vine. And beside her is a graceful white swan, which represents wealth and majesty in medieval times. And even today too. Um, so yeah, she's got a, a beautiful dress with a red cloak. And um, when we draw this card, it would appear that your life needs more joy right now. So she's coming in to say you need more joy. It's like your essential life force. You need to maybe go to a party, which we did all weekend. You need to dance. Um, it's time to play. She even says holidays, <laughs> which is funny because I just tried to talk you out of Hey, if their holidays don't resonate, don't do it. But she's saying if it if it will be fun for you and bring you joy, then do it. It's like a pretty simple decision with all things. I know what you're thinking. Everyone's like, well, then I guess I shouldn't go to work because it doesn't bring me joy. <laughs> but here's an idea. Why don't you try to take a little joy with you? to the work that I know you probably can't walk away from. But if it's making you that miserable, then it's time to look at your options and kind of see what you can do. So if you've been feeling that life has been a bit joyless and full of responsibility, okay, think of this card as a permission slip. 
to say yes to more luxury. So Devil's Club was like, you can say no to things and luxury is saying, and remember, you can say yes to the things that you do want. Okay, so you don't have to go around just saying no, 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 screw you, no. Like you don't always have to be pushing away. Okay, it's fine to maintain your boundaries, but then the next step is then to say yes. Like don't just have a void. Say yes to what you would like to be doing. Say yes to luxury. Um, so she's just saying go ahead. Um, go ahead and have some fun. Go ahead and see what happens when you go to the to the to, you accept an invitation or you have an idea of something you want that you've wanted to do but you kind of talked yourself out of it like it's too frivolous too expensive she's saying what the hell just why don't you have some fun today and do it and see what happens and see how much joy and fun and luxury you can bring in to your life so this is a really fun um, oracle deck. It always has a, a wish spell to do, um, and you know, which is interesting. I now I think it's interesting that I got this that we pulled cedar, which is ritual, and then I was really drawn to this deck. I had kind of forgotten that there's always a spell to go with each card, and this one is really easy. Um, you need a fresh grape leaf. And I have some growing on my porch. <laughs> so this is a vine wish spell to attract more luxurious wealth and abundance into your life. Which, hey, who doesn't need that, right? So we could do a simple grape leaf spell, um, which we would take a grape leaf and we would wash it in cool water, clean it off, pat it dry. We would take a piece of pretty paper, decorative paper, like maybe a little piece of origami paper, just something attractive, and write your wish for any little luxuries you have been hoping for. Anything that you want. Little, little things, sure, because sometimes the little things is just enough, right? It just keeps us going. Write down your wishes. Fold the paper into a small scroll shape, so roll it up, and place it at the bottom of the grape leaf. Wrap your wish in the fresh leaf, okay? Just roll it up, okay? And you will have a beautiful little wish package to be placed in the garden under a favorite tree or your favorite plant or your favorite herb. So go ahead and take it to the garden, take your little spade shovel, and you can either just lay it on the ground or just, you know, lift up the dirt slightly and plant it, plant your wish, plant your intention, and be ready to allow it to work its magic. So it's kind of like we kick in the law of faith then, right? So it's like, put your wish out there and make your intentions. Go ahead with your little wish, wish ritual, right? It's kind of fun. Um, it's really fun, especially if you have something that you're wishing for and you have a grape leaf. <laughs> you don't have to do it this way. You can do it any way. You can alter it to suit your needs. And then you put it in the garden under your favorite tree or your favorite herb, your favorite plant, and allow it to do its magic. So thank you, Luxury, for coming in. And um, Cedar wanted us to do some type of ritual today and luxury and the vine the grapes come in and say yeah we actually have a really fun way for you to manifest some abundance and joy and fun and luxury into your life so and as we do our healing work and we open up our heart we can allow that in and as we reclaim our power and we feel our self-worth we know that we are worthy of fun and we are worthy of a of a luxurious life and we are worthy of abundance and we are worthy of joy. So yes, you are so worthy of joy and you are so worthy 
of your direct link to universal wisdom. You have all this energy that you can tap into. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. So take time today to develop more trust in your own deepest intuition and wisdom and you be the one who makes decisions for you. Make more decisions, reclaim your power, open up your heart, do your healing work, include ritual in your everyday life, and include luxury into your life. Bring it in, draw it to you, love it, summon it, love it some more. (laughs) And most of all, have fun with it. Let's get your vibration raised. Let's get your energy flowing. Let's get you to level up. Okay, level up into your next highest frequency for the highest good of you and the all. So thank you so much, Devil's Club. Thank you so much, Rose. Thank you so very much, Hawthorne and Cedar and the Grapevine. Um, So many magical energies coming in and so many loving just absolutely loving energy coming in. So know that you are worthy of joy, right? This inner power in your heart space, healing with ritual, it's just so important. So you guys have a beautiful Monday and um, yeah, I'll see you again in the AM.